good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Samyukta. I'm Radhika. And we're going to start with, as all Indians uh, will uh, tend to do, with an old story, the Ramayana, perhaps one of India's most famous ancient uh, epics. And never mind if you haven't heard of it, because we're going to tell you the short version. It's a very, very simple story about a noble prince called Rama, who through a twist of fate and a pretty deceitful stepmother was exiled to a forest for 14 long years. And his dutiful wife, Sita, followed him. Yeah. No, no, and he went. And Sita said, if you go, I go. No, Sita. The forest is beset by Rakshasa demons. They harass our wise men and desecrate their ritual fires. I must fight them alone. But Rama, a woman's place is next to her husband. I will accept any hardship. I cannot live without you. 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 <laughs> so as you can see, Sita is the epitome of the Indian woman. And who wouldn't want to be her? I mean, she's dutiful, she's obedient, she's beautiful, and she's very, very, very kind. So um, in the forest, life carries on as one would expect. It's hot, there are animals, and there are long periods of time when Sita finds herself left alone, when Rama and his brother Lakshmana go out to hunt and do manly things. <laughs> but because the forest was dangerous, as forests tend to be, Lakshmana came up with a pretty ingenious idea. He drew a magical circle around the house, which protected everything inside it, including Sita. So what would happen if Sita crossed the line and went out? If Sita left the circle, terrible things would happen. And for her, they did. She ended up being kidnapped, lured out of the circle, and kidnapped by a ten-headed king who took her to Sri Lanka, which then unleashed the worst war imaginable at the time, where even the monkeys came out to fight. All because she crossed the line. It was all her fault, of course. So the circle that was drawn around Sita has a name. It's called the Lakshman Rekha. Um, and even today in India, we use this phrase to talk about lines that protect us and keep evil out. For example, it's also the name of a very famous cockroach killing poison. <laughs> so basically today, even today, for women and for cockroaches in India, there are <laughs> dire consequences, dire, dire consequences if you cross the line. Okay, so we're done with the history lesson. And now we're going to take you to our very modern city, Bangalore. <laughs> Welcome to Bangalore. It's chaotic, it's busy, it's famous for potholes and crazy traffic, and for stealing tech jobs from other countries. It's a very big city, and it's bursting with people, and often, I mean, even to me, it feels like you can lose yourself in it. And this is what it sounds like. But it's not all bad, of course. There are beautiful pockets with parks full of rain trees and flower markets. And the slender loris, which is somehow indigenous to our city. But for women, the circle still exists. And every woman will tell you about the rules of going out. And we have these rules because we still live in a culture where women have to prove that they have legitimate reasons to be out. So even before you leave the house, you probably hear things like, you want to go out and hang out with your friends? Why are you going so far away? How will we reach you? What if someone recognizes you? Will we have to come and pick you up? You're going to wear that? It's not good. I'll tell you what to wear. Because good girls don't loiter. And we know this tone so well. A couple of months ago, there was a video that went viral of a man who had something to say to a woman who went out in the evening wearing a pair of shorts. Please wear the proper dress code of India. So this is an improper dress code yes. that she's wearing. Yes. I'm so absolutely telling. Please walk a properly dress code for Indians. In India, we call this moral policing. And as an Indian woman out in the world, you always have to be prepared for someone telling you how respectable women ought to dress and behave. 
Over time, the litany of these reprimands adds up. And it can get dark when it feels like this feedback is constant and things you hear in the past reappear as reminders. It can feel like you're bearing the weight of the risk all on your own. And the violence, because sometimes there is violence, can feel casual and socially sanctioned. We asked some of our friends how this makes them feel. It's like so much stress and overthinking. Eventually, every time I walked on Brigade Road, somebody would hold my, like, touch me somewhere inappropriately. Yeah, like when someone tells me that you cannot be here, you cannot do this. So that's when he got out of the car and then he tried to like hit me. What am I afraid of? First of all, traffic. It's like, it's like my rights are being taken away from me or something. Second of all, like the abuse of people that we've been through. I don't like to be constricted in what, in what I want to do. I want, want to grow and explore and expand. But it is stress. It's just some kind of being a woman stress. It sounds bad, doesn't it? But this is how we deal with it. Inside the brain of every woman, big calculations are continuously being made. Because you've got to prepare. You've got to prepare to be stared at by strangers. You've got to prepare to lie or have an alibi if you want to go out at night. You've got to prepare to de-escalate situations and always stay invisible. It can feel like we have to perform heroic mental acrobatics to figure out how to do even the smallest thing. Because to feel free, you have to simultaneously reject everything you've been taught about how to behave, grow the courage to do things differently, and come up with a way to do it without being caught. That said, we've also worked the system to our advantage. We have cried when we've needed to, when we've been caught by the police for speeding, and we've shamed others in a way that only women can. But the point is, the larger point is that all of this takes a lot of hard work. I mean, just look at all these rules. I know I've done many of these. Um, I've had a fake name. I've always had an alibi handy. But what we want to know is how do other women in our city do it? What are each of their absurd strategies? How do they prepare to leave their homes, go to work, sneak off to have fun, or avoid a dangerous situation? Whom did they have to negotiate with for their freedom? And when the bad stuff happens, the harassment and the violence, we really want to know how they deal with it. Wait, so what are the rules for men in Bangalore? You're probably wondering if there are any rules at all for the men in Bangalore. <laughs> Brush your teeth. Um, we're just kidding. There are no rules for men in Bangalore. You basically get to do whatever you want. You can go anywhere, sit anywhere, go for walks in the middle of the night, stare at anything you want to stare at. But women want to have fun and feel free too. It's not impossible. It's just complicated. And that's what City of Women is really about. It's about how these women have fun and feel free in their own city. You'll hear things seldom heard before. Like what it sounds like when women wander around a city with abandon, take up spaces on benches to read books and eat peanuts, or take naps in the park, or dress however they want and strut down a street and show how all of these things are perfectly legitimate reasons to leave the circle. 